Hey guys, Miss Marisa here, and in this video, we're going to talk about evaluating PES graphs and also see the different types of questions you could be asked regarding these graphs. Um, so looking at this one here, it wants us to first label each peak on the graph with the electron subshell each represents. Um, in order to do that, what I first need to do is figure out which end of the graph represents the closer to the nucleus peak. Uh, remember, they give us down here that this axis is energy, but really what it is, it's a binding energy. How much energy do I need to remove those electrons, which is different than how much energy those electrons possess. So we have to be careful there. Um, remember, if you're talking about how much energy electrons possess, uh, the later in the filling order we go, the further from the nucleus you get, the more energy they have. But that actually means that the less energy it would take to remove those. So I've got to be careful there. Um, when I find that high binding energy end, uh, those electrons that are closest to the nucleus would take the most energy to remove because of Coulomb's law. The distance between they and the nucleus is very small. And so what that means is that the force of attraction would be really high. And so it would take a lot of energy to remove the close to the nucleus electrons. So once I figure out the close to the nucleus end, then I can start in my filling order. So I know that 1s fills up first, then 2s, then 2p and then 3s, and I would just continue to go in order with my filling. So now I can look at the heights and kind of figure out how many electrons are in each of those regions. Obviously, with the exception of the last one, all of these should be filled up. So that means I should have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then here on the last one, I kind of need to use the height because that may or may not be totally full. Um, so I look here and I see, hey, this 3s is about the same height as the 1s and the 2s, and so what that means is that it should be 3s2. should be the same number of electrons as the other two peaks if they're the same height. All right, by the way, two quick things I wanna mention here before we totally move on, and that is you notice here that they used some breaks to represent really big gaps in those energy amounts. Uh, the reason why we have really big gaps at those points is because I'm jumping up entire energy levels at those breakpoints. So obviously there's gonna be a pretty big distance difference between 1s electrons in the nucleus versus the 2s and the 2p electrons in the nucleus. So, you know, as I get those really big jumps um, in energy levels, that's where I'll see those big jumps in binding energy as well. However, you do notice there is a small difference in energy between the 2s and the 2p. Um, that actually comes because of the distance away as well. If I actually look uh, at an orbital model, uh, what you'll notice is here's my 2s, okay? And you can see kind of the center of the cloud would represent kind of the average distance. But then the comparable two Ps are these hourglasses here. You see they extend out a little bit further than the 2S does. So the average distance of the 2P orbitals is actually slightly farther. And so that gives them a slightly less binding energy to them. All right, so next ask, which element is illustrated in the spectra? Well, based on that last thing I wrote down, 3s2, I can go see, hey, I know 3s2 would end with magnesium. So this particular element, this particular spectrum must be representative of magnesium. All right, so next it says, hey, draw a circle around the peak, which would be used to determine the first ionization energy of an element. Well, to remind you what first ionization energy is, um, if I have magnesium, it would be the energy I would need to remove the very first electron off of it and turn the magnesium into a plus one. Now, keep in mind, ionization energy does address an order to this, okay? Ionization energy, I would wanna remove electrons in order. Well, think about what electrons I would wanna remove off first to change magnesium into an ion. As we've talked about when we did electron configurations and orbital diagrams, I always want to remove the valence electrons first. So what that means is that I would lose these 3s2, 
electrons first. So one of those would come off in the first ionization energy. By the way, uh, when we talk about successive ionization energies, the second ionization energy would we be removing the second electron out of the 3s. And then once both of those are gone, then the third ionization energy would be removing one of the two p's so that you would just keep on going from there. All right, now the next question is probably one of the more challenging questions we could be asked about with a PES graph. It wants us to sketch in the relative location and peak height for the valence electrons of sodium on the PES graph above, meaning we have magnesium, but they want us to draw in sodium. Now, when I draw new peaks, there's two things I have to consider. The first thing I have to consider is the height of the last peak. Because obviously, on the last peak, you could have a different number of electrons, okay? Whereas magnesium ended with 3s2, now I just want to end with 3s1. So what that's going to do is that's going to cut the height of the peak in half. Now the other thing I want to address is the amount of energy, and specifically the amount of binding energy, and this I would actually need to do for each peak. Okay, now this particular question only asks us to draw in the valence electrons, but if it asked us to draw in all of them, the amount of each peak would be shifted. Now, the way we decide how it's shifted is based off of, huh, surprise, surprise, Coulomb's Law. So let's think about Coulomb's Law for just a minute and compare sodium and magnesium. I see that sodium and magnesium are in the same period. And so what that means is that Coulomb's law, the piece that's gonna be affected the most is charge. And remember for elements, we wanna think about effective nuclear charge. Well, sodium has one less proton than magnesium does. So what that means is that sodium is going to have less or weaker attractive forces because the effective nuclear charge is less because of that decreased number of protons. So if I have decreased attractive forces in sodium, then what that should mean is that our binding energy amount should also be less. So to kind of recap here, okay? So sodium has a decreased number of protons, okay? So what that means is that it has a decreased effective nuclear charge. What that also means then is it has a decreased attractive forces. And so therefore we're gonna see decreased binding energies, okay? So that's gonna shift our peaks one way or the other. Now what I'm gonna do here for a second is I'm actually gonna draw all the peaks in even though it really only asked for the valence and then we'll talk about which one was specifically for the valence. So I want all of my peaks for sodium to have less binding energy. So that means all of my peaks are gonna be shifted slightly this direction because this is the direction that has less energy to it, okay? so. This 1s peak for sodium would be slightly shifted over, but the same height. The 2s peak would be slightly shifted over, but the same height. The 2p6 would be slightly shifted over, but the same height. But here on this last peak, not only is it going to be shifted over, but it's also only going to be half the height of the 3s2 peak for magnesium. Because again, instead of having 3s2, now I only have 3s1. Now I wanna be really careful here because technically it only said to draw the peak for the valence electrons, okay? So really this is the only peak that you would wanna show. I just wanted to kind of show you how the other ones would look. So that way, if we see two graphs compared, you kind of know what you're looking at. But be very careful. If it says only to draw the valence peak, then make sure you're only drawing the valence peak. I have seen that kind of question before on the AP test, okay?
All right, let's look at another one together down here. So the first thing it wants us to do is to label each peak on the graph above with the electron subshell each represents. Shocker, they ask this like every question, right? So again, I'm gonna find my high energy end, okay? So here's my high energy end, 1,000 versus 0.1. Um, and so I know that this is the kind of close to the nucleus end. And so now I'm gonna start labeling my peaks. Now, I know first would come 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then I get over here. Now, once I start getting where I have d peaks involved, then this is where it gets a little messy, okay? This taller peak here is actually the 4s2 peak. This bitty peak down here is 3d1. So you notice that d peak kind of comes before. So once you start getting into d's, and don't worry, we're never going to give you ones that are big enough to show f peaks, so you don't even have to worry about those. But once I start getting into d peaks, they actually come a little bit before that 4s, even though that kind of seems odd with filling order. Uh, the reason why has to do, again, with binding energy. Um, the three Ds are actually have a higher binding energy ever so slightly than four S. It's kind of an oddity there, even though technically the three D electrons possess more energy. So again, some kind of weirdness happens with those Ds. We always want to be careful with the Ds when they get involved. Um, so it asks, hey, which element is illustrated on the spectra? So I would want to go think about where 3D1 is, and that would end here with SC, so scandium would be our element here. Now it says, hey, when this element becomes a cation, the 4S electrons will always be removed before the 3D, even though the 3D electrons fill last. So again, it's kind of a weirdness here. It says, hey, based on the information in the graph, give a reason why 4s electrons would be removed first. So we've always said like, hey, in filling order, you know, I would go 4s2 and then the 3ds and they're, you know, from out on out. Um, but yet we've always said that the valence get removed first. So those 4s's would come off before the 3ds, even though the 3ds filled in last. This is the reason why right here. Look at my binding energy values. 3D has a slightly higher binding energy than 4S. Wouldn't it stand a reason that you want to remove off first whatever is easiest to remove off? So I want to remove 4S electrons first because the 4S have a lower binding energy. And if they have a lower binding energy, then what that means is that they're easier to remove. I always want to remove off what's easiest first, right? Okay. Um, the reason for this has to do with the fact that um, the shapes don't come into play here um, like they do with energy amount for how much energy the electrons possess. The shapes don't come into play with binding energy. Um, distance is almost kind of the key thing here that really impacts binding energy whereas those shape weirdness doesn't. So that's kind of the reason for the difference there. By the way, it then says, hey, if the PES for the next successive element on the periodic table was constructed, what differences in peak height and or placement would be seen? So let's think about that for a minute. Let's say I would want to do the next successive element, which would be titanium. Well, titanium has one more electron in that 3D. So the 3D peak would be taller. And since this was representative of one, now I would want it to be representative of two. So it would be twice as high or twice as tall, however you want to word that. And energy-wise, think about 
again, protons and effective nuclear charge and all that. Uh, titanium has one more proton than scandium does, and so therefore, more than likely, it would have a greater effective nuclear charge. And having that, I would have stronger attractive forces, and so it would be harder to remove those electrons. So what that means is that the peaks would be um, shifted to a higher energy. And I should specify a higher binding energy. And on this graph, what that would do is it would shift the peaks over to the left. So if I was to draw that 3D peak for titanium, what I would end up doing is creating a peak a little bit to the left and twice as high. So it would get a peak that looked kind of like that, okay? Um, a lot of times they don't ask us to do that for the Ds because they get kind of tricky and stuff. But it's not something we couldn't do. It's just, you know, there's a little another monkey wrench into it. All right, here's what I want y'all to do. Um, you've got a problem on the next page. I will warn you really quick about this one. Be very careful with your high energy end on this one. We see that this one is flip-flop from the other ones that we've done. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video here and I want you to go see if you can try this one out from start to finish, okay? So pause the video, go try it out. Did you pause the video? Did you try it out? Here, I'll let you make sure you can see these bottom ones. Did you try it out? Okay, I'm going to assume that you did. Let's see how we did on this one right here. So let me put up my answers. Okay. So the first thing I did in purple is I went and labeled my peaks because the high energy end is over here. That means this is closer to the nucleus. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. So be careful. This one, that binding energy axis was totally flipped. Okay. Um, so next it says, hey, draw a circle around the peak, which would be used to determine the first ionization energy. Well, remember, first ionization energy is removing off that very first electron, and so that would be removing these 4s2s. Again, for the two reasons, because it's valence and it has the lowest binding energy, so it's the easiest to remove. That's why it would come off first. So then it says, hey, write the equation for the first ionization of the element. So that would be calcium changing over to losing an electron and being calcium plus one. Yes, I realize that it's not its normal charge. So eventually it would have a second ionization energy where it lost the second electron. Don't panic. These sometimes have a weird charge that we aren't used to seeing. And then it says, hey, sketch in the relative locations and peak heights for the entire spectrum of potassium. So you notice I thought about a few things first. I first asked myself, hey, how would the height of the last peak change? Well, the height of the last peak would be shorter because, again, if I'm doing potassium, that ends at 4s1 versus the 4s2 of calcium. And then I also want to think about binding energy. So for potassium, because it has one less proton, that means I have less effective nuclear charge, which means I have weaker forces, and so therefore it's going to be easier to remove electrons off, and so its binding energy is going to be less. So all of those peaks should have less binding energy. Now we have to be careful on this graph because that means my peaks here are shifted to the left because the left was the side that had less binding energy. So notice 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, all those peaks are just shifted left, but the same height. However, this last peak here is not only shifted left, but it's also shorter because potassium only has that one electron in its 4s sublevel. All right, I hope we're feeling okay about PES. Um, if you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.